Since you all have come to know about the tool known as Atomy, the manner in which you will succeed is dependent on the choices you make. Atomy already has a lot of social evidence that shows how it can be used as a tool to achieve success. Because many people have become successful with the business, and there are still people who are achieving success. Although everyone is given the opportunity to do this, not everyone can be successful. It all depends on what you decide to do. Now I think that some of you will be unfamiliar with the concept of becoming successful and how to achieve it. So I will let you in on a little secret. The best way to become accustomed to success is to do everything with do-or-die attitude. You will not only become familiar but also do well with what you do. People say it doesn't work, it's too hard, or I won't do it, when they haven't even done anything. Thus, the best way to do this business is just to go to people and talk with them. Then what do you do when you don't know what to say? There is a trick to that as well. All you have to do is just tell them anything. As you talk to others, you might or might not be able to answer them. You will be able to find out the questions they might ask and the things they want to know at the time. Talking with people is like riding a bike. You can't ride a bike by just learning the theories behind it, right? No one learns how to ride a bike by just reading about it. You might understand how to not fall by steering a bike, but you won't be able to do it without physically trying. Even if you don't know all the concepts, you can still learn how to ride a bike on your own. Do you think you can ride a bike without falling once? It's not possible, right? You will fall over and scrape your knee a few times before you can actually ride it. The fastest way to learn is by falling off a bike a number of times. As long as you have confidence, you will get better by facing the difficulties. One person actually called me one day. She said, I heard someone everything you said, but he doesn't understand. So can you explain it for me? So the elderly woman put a young gentleman on the line. I asked him what the problem was. He explained that this elderly woman was his neighbor, and he was saying the cosmetics were made at a nuclear power plant because that was what I had told her. I tried to explain that wasn't the case, and I was abruptly called to clear things up. I informed it was Kerry and not a nuclear power plant. Afterward, he thanked me for clarifying. I asked him to put the elderly lady back on the phone, and I explained the whole situation to her again. She then asked his power plant or research institute is the same to me. In any event, the younger gentleman started doing this business. And the elderly woman became successful as her line grew. Whether it is a power plant or a research institute, all you have to do is tell other people about it. Sooner or later, something will catch their interest, and you won't suffer any loss for trying. You can also learn from these situations. You will be able to succeed as long as you do this. The atomic business is one that works. Compared to what has happened until now, the business will become much bigger in the future. Being determined to succeed is very important. Yeah, not many people have this mindset. And that is the main reason why people don't succeed. You need to be tenacious about succeeding, but not many people know what is considered a success. They think it would be great if I could make $3,000 to $7,000 a month. Can you be wealthy with only $3,000 to $7,000 a month? Some of you are thinking, of course, that would be wonderful. I can just tell by looking at your expressions. 
If that's all you earn, then that's not success because you won't have any love after sending your kids to college. You will have a growing dad if you make less than $3,000. With $7,000 a month, you might have a little breeding room. But you won't be able to live a decent life. If you want to live like a decent person, you can give your parents some allowance at least between three thousand and four thousand dollars a month. How can you send that amount if you only make three to seven thousand dollars a month? You need more money when you get order, because you continually get sick and you need a caregiver. Since we all need to succeed. It's important to think about what success is and why many people are not able to become successful. So for this lecture, I'll explain what success is and how you can succeed. All of us begin our life when we are born and then study until the age of 30. We then work until we are 60 years of age. From 60 to about 90, as most people live until then, we live out our retirement years. There is even a scary rumor going around saying that if you are unfortunate, you will live until the age of 120. It will become a huge problem because this period would be a disaster. Living a long life without money is a catastrophe. As you become more vulnerable to illnesses with AIDS, what do you do when you are ill without money? Not only do you become frustrated, but it also becomes stifling for your body and mind. Even when people prepare by studying for 30 years and then work hard for another 30 to succeed, most people are not ready for retirement. In one statistic, only 1% becomes rich by the age of 60. In a sense, these people achieve success. 4% of the people became financially independent. Although they weren't wealthy, they didn't have to ask others for money. The remaining 70% had no job and had no money for their retirement. Even though the statistics was from another country, you get the idea of what it is trying to show. If everyone studied hard for 30 years and did their best to succeed for another 30 years by doing backbreaking labor from dawn till dusk, why were only these people successful and the other 95% failed in life? People wonder what caused this phenomenon. One person who paid particular attention to the statistics was a man named Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie, who was born into a poor family, thought about what would happen if he was reborn into poverty. He wanted to know if he would be able to become successful again. He believed that even if he was born into 10 poor families, he would still be able to live the life of a successful person every single time. What gave him this confidence it was due to the fact that Carnegie knew about the law of success and understood this law. Thus, he believed that the 95% didn't know about the law of success. And that was the reason why they had failed. What did the successful people have in common? Who achieved success? And what do I need if I want to always achieve success? As Carnegie already knew about the law of success, he wanted to share this information with everyone. Thus, his ideas were organized into the law of success. The law of success is very similar to the laws of nature because you can't just define everything as a law. For example, the law of success was already predetermined. You would succeed if you followed it and fail if you didn't. This is just like the law of farming. Since the law of farming follows the law of nature, you need to farm according to these laws. If you want a successful harvest, you can't just do what you want. I'll explain the law of success. 
by using something simple like the law of farming as an example. Now, what is the first thing that the farmer must do? How much of what he is going to harvest in his mind? If he wants two bags of rice, what kind of seeds would he need? He would buy rice seeds, right? If he wanted a bag of peanuts and then got rices, he's going to fail. The farmer must first have how much of what he wants to harvest in his mind. With the goal that the farmer has in mind, he will be able to control the necessary decisions. Similarly, if you want to be successful, you need to first have the image of the life you want in your head. Let's use this building as an example. And say that this was built around 10 years ago. The building was actually first built in a place you can see. Where do you think that is? It was built in the architect's mind. He had to decide if it would be five stories or two stories and build it this way and that before making it two stories. In his mind, due to the uh, legislative policies, afterward he drew out the blueprint and gave it to the construction company. The construction workers followed the blueprint and made this building. As such, before this building was built in the scene, it was first constructed in the mind of the architect. Likewise, you need to first picture your successful life in your mind. Then the question becomes, what is considered a successful life? Answering the question is very complicated, right? The answer is complicated because we were created to be complex. As human beings, we have a physical body called flesh. Our spirit and soul resides within this flesh. Furthermore, we are surrounded by the environment. These four elements are what make us human beings. The flesh is not who we are. And you can think of it as your house. Our true essence is our spirit and soul. And they are the residents of this house. The flesh, which is our body, desires to live a long, healthy, and luxurious life, which can be summarized as to live well. Our spirit has its own desires as well. So what are its desires? Well, it wants to live in accordance to our conscience, and it longs for the eternal. The spirit desires eternal life, which is related to the concept of time. You can easily differentiate spirit and soul, because the soul has the ability to control areas like your emotions and the knowledge you learn. We can make decisions in these areas. You can throw a fit and then become calm, right? You can control whether or not to laugh. Learning and memorizing are activities of the unseen soul. Now, animals don't have a spirit and only have a soul since they can record memories. Since you can teach dogs to bring items A or B, animals are able to be trained. They also have feelings. If you bother them as they eat, they will become angry. Dogs will wag their tail in the line when you give them food. However, animals like dogs don't have a conscience. Let's say a dog bit your neighbor's leg. Have you ever seen a dog feel guilty about its actions that it would ask itself, why didn't I hold back? You will never find such a dog. Animals don't have a conscience, nor do they have a concept of time. When we grow old, we worry about our end. In the Bible, it states that He has also set eternity in the human heart. Eternity is related to the concept of time, right? The spirit understands the concept of time. And if you truly want to fulfill its desires, you need to know our Creator. You need to know why you are living and why you were born. Therefore,
We need to love and be loved by our Creator, which we summarize as to love. Furthermore, our soul wants to live a peaceful life. And it has a desire for knowledge, which means we need to learn in terms of our social and surrounding environment. We have a desire to contribute in life with something beneficial. We need to achieve all of these things. If you can't attain all these desires, you will have regrets on your deathbed. For example, if you didn't have a healthy life, would you be full of regrets? Of course you would. If you live a short life and die at 30, you are bound to be full of regrets. It would be the same if you died poor and never got to live a luxurious life. What if you live a life that went against your conscience, you are going to have a deep resentment. If you died after always being angry and hating everyone, or you didn't accomplish anything, and died without doing anything beneficial, you are going to have some type of regret or resentment. So you must live a life that will fulfill the desires of your flesh, spirit, soul, and environment. You need to live that kind of life and set your goal to do so. A life where you are able to satisfy all four areas is known as a balanced life. Again, this is called a balanced life. So when you are setting your life goals and picturing your successful life in your mind, all four of these areas must be equally satisfied. Repeat after me, balance life. Life well, love, learn, and contribute in life. It's important for you to envision this kind of life. You will create this image in your mind. Actually, these four areas are connected to each other. The flesh desires to live well. The spirit wants love. Memorize this, okay? Even if I tell you not to study, you have to at least learn this concept. The soul wishes to learn. This is quite simple. The environment desires to contribute in life. These four elements are intertwined with each other. They might not look like much if they are separated. That's when people say, what good is living well? Or why do I need to know much? Now the reason why you must live well is because you have people that you love. To do that, you need to learn. With what you learn, you make contributions. They are all linked and related to each together. If you don't live well, it's hard on your children and your parents will be distressed since all of these are associated with one another. Love can fall apart if you don't live well. Many people say they get a divorce due to clashing personalities. Yeah, when you look into it, the main cause is actually money. Let's say a husband bring home thirty k dollars a month. Would you divorce him because your partner is cash clash? Would you separate with someone who made fifty k dollars a month because of personality differences? No one in their right mind would do that. If a wife continually earned fifty fifty k dollars a month, no husband would file for divorce due to the clash in personality. People don't separate because of personality differences. They go their own ways because of money. I love my wife very much. I had a chaser for a year because I, be, before I could marry her. I lived well for a while. The company I worked 17 years for uh, didn't seem to prepare for my elderly life, so I left the job, started the online shopping mall called IamKorea.com. As the business was too ahead of its time, it didn't well for a little bit. I had to close down the business. When a company fails, 
Not only do you lose your assets, but your health deteriorates as well. When business goes under, you have to pay all of the unpaid dues, the personal expenses, and overdue taxes. However, it didn't have enough to pay anything. Thus, I became a credit and tax delinquent, and I also um, had to move into a small renter. No, not only did I liver diseases worsen, I also had the glucose level in the 400s. My doctor friend told me that I shouldn't work when this happened. He said it was too late for him to help and told me to go to a bigger hospital. So I went and received treatment at a hospital. Since I couldn't work and I didn't have money, what could my family do? Well, with the money, my wife wrote home. We paid the rent and the children's tuition fees. And do you know um, much a woman in their 50s make in Korea? They make around $1,500. A low end would be $1,200. Since we were trying to live on the $1,500 income, our house was very cold in the winter. Whenever I came home, I tried to act strong by saying, Hey, honey, let's turn on the heater. We shouldn't save money when we don't have any. After hearing this, my wife would come back in a fussy manner by saying, You don't think I'm cold? My wife was indirectly telling me you would have mo make money if I were making good money, yet I'm freezing like this because you couldn't. Who are you to tell me what to do? I was actually telling her this for a different reason. I'm someone who believes that you shouldn't save money when we don't have money. We don't have it. Everyone, don't save money when you only have make a little. You should just use it all because it's too. It's not much. When you don't have much, it's better to spend it and leave a little more com comfortably. You won't be rich by saving that a little amount. Saving that little amount. When should you save? You you save when you are making good money. When you are making 30k, 50k dollars as a royal master, you should set aside and save some money so that you can make prepare preparations for the retirement. That's when you can actually save money. You also shouldn't budget your expenses based on your income. Rather, you should first calculate the expenses for your desirable life, and you must determine whether or not. A certain job or business could accommodate your expenses. Let's say you figure that you need 20k dollars in your life. I'm talking about the per month, not an annually, because you need a housekeeper at home, right? You might need a personal cook too. You also should be spending, uh, sending some money to your pa parents, giving your children a good education. And everything is added. You can't do anything without 20k or 50k dollars. As such, you need to find something that you earn at least 30k dollars because making 20k dollars not enough. You need to be a person who makes 30k dollars a month. And you have to first determine your expenses and then find something that makes earning at least that amount possible. If an opportunity allows you to make 30k dollars, you, you need to do that, you, sh you should do it, but if it doesn't, you, mo you have to move on. Since we all have people we love, we need to achieve success. Even though I love my wife, and I did whatever uh, I, I could to marry her, we started to argue a lot when we didn't have enough money. After three years of on and off arguing, my wife said to me one day, Honey, let's separate once the children graduate. Now my wife is a person who says what she will do. When I heard her saying this, I lost all feelings in my legs. I just fell to my knees. I grabbed onto my wife's leg and started crying. I think I was weeping for about 20 minutes. I told her, I can't let you go. You don't have a house to live in, nor any retirement fund, so what will you do? Just wait until I buy you a house and prepare a retirement fund for you. I can't let you go like this, so please wait until then. My wife then glanced over and said, when? In a thousand years?
I have butter and ice house. Gave her retirement money, but she hasn't told me when she's leaving. Therefore, if you want to rekindle the love you have for the people you love, you must leave well. Back then, I was so ill that I couldn't move. I became extremely tired and when I moved around. Um, I lost about 45 pounds and had uh, big wrinkles in my neck as if I was truly old. It was a difficult time for me. I didn't know what to do. It felt like I was trapped in a cave that was uh, pinch black. When I get to that point, you become afraid to be courageous. It becomes difficult to find the courage to succeed. You fear that you will fail and fall back down into despair. So it is hard to have that resolve. Although it felt like I was trapped in the dark cave, I could still see the speck of light at the entrance. I told myself that I needed to have hope. The best wish to have when you don't have any is to have hope. If you don't have any hope in times like this, there's no way for you to escape from the despair. I did whatever I could do. I could have a hope. I told myself I can back up and become healthy again. I'll be able to lead my family again. I need to believe that all of these is possible, even though there is only a trace of life at the entrance of the cave. I had to get up and walk toward it despite the difficulty. As I headed toward the entrance, the ray of hope slowly became bigger. Eventually, I exited out of the cave and I was able to step into a world that was filled with the light of hope. When you feel like you are trapped and trapped and in despair, you, where you feel you can't do anything, where you're surrounded by rocks and obstacles, you must do whatever it takes to head toward that light. You you are not doing the work you do because you are 100% that you could succeed. If you think there is a 1% possibility and think that it won't work 99% of the time, you have to forget about the 99% and work toward that 1% of success. Once you go toward that light, it will slowly become bigger and gradually increase from being 1% to 2% to 10% and that light will continually grow bigger. It is imperative that you have hope Due to the people who you love, you must never give up in this situation. Instead, you do whatever it takes to get back up and get to a point where you could share this love with those you care about. Anyway, you have to make a movie and it needs to be continuously playing in your mind. You will be the main character in this film. You are also the director and the scenario writer. It looks something like this. There will be smaller circles surrounding a big one. In one of these smaller circles, you will write one thing that will allow you to live well. For live well, you could have health here, right? For a luxury of life, you, people tend to want a better house for their basic necessities. Nowadays, we all need a car, but getting one could be costly. What else? We have love. You can have trouble to plan out uh, your family trips, right? For a learn, you could have children and their education, or you could even write about your own studies. For a contribute, you might write volunteering. There will be 10 ticks on these lines here. 
You will be evaluating, for instance, your current health and scoring yourself out of 10 points. You might have 5 points for being naturally healthy. For now, your house, you will score it by comparing your current home with the house you want to live in. For example, you want uh, 240, 490 square feet, but you are living in a 10,000 square feet. Uh, made up of feet, you might give yourself two points in the scenario for trouble. You want to trouble abroad at least once a year, but you never went for 10 years, then you will give yourself a one. Afterward, you will connect these dots, and the shape that comes out is your own will of life. If this will is small and jacked, it means that your life isn't going well. You need to figure out how you will make all of these a perfect 10. Once you do, it will become a big round wheel of life and it will be able to roll well. You will be writing how to make them perfect tens by filling out the boxes in the form. One more thing, please write out your plan for your ranks as well. Give yourself a deadline for which ranks senior members will all know very well, so ask them and fill it out. Therefore, you need to do what you could do now, which means you should be living a balanced life. There are many people who think, why go to the Success Academy and listen to the same thing when you could just sell the product? These people eventually give up after a while. So you need to come to the Success Academy every month. People who never miss a seminar are the ones who succeeded. When you are learning, you have to continue to do it. There are times when you are exhausted, right? Please, uh, people who come to the Success Academy when, will envision making $30K a month, buying a big house or apartment, or driving a Mercedes Benz or BMW. But once they leave, they come back to their senses. And they think, how can I get a home that costs this much and is 2,490 square meter feet and when I can't even pay an interest in a rental or I don't even have gas money for the car, how can I get a Mercedes Benz? I must have been crazy. They shake their hands and try and forget about it. That's when they truly fail. You can't come back to the reality and forget your dream. As human beings, we have a tendency to snap back to reality after living in our vision. What should you do? You need to return to the Success Academy, rebuild your vision, and strengthen your willpower to stand firm above it. As such, you have to come every month and rewrite your vision every single time. Because your life scenario could change from the month before, you have to refine and polish your film. Creating your vision is a crucial part of your, your success. You can't have a vision without confidence. Not only do you tell yourself what you are doing, going to do, but you also have to tell your family, friends, and all people you meet. Because if you are the only ones who knows, then you can easily give up on your dreams when it gets hard and you can't see it happening. But therefore, you must declare your vision to others. After you write your life scenario, you should share it with your family. You tell them you will be moving into 2,400 square meter feet house and you can say you, you to your husband, I will give you a Mercedes Benz and I will buy it for you, but you have to help me for three years. That's how you should share your vision with others. You can't keep it to yourself. Ultimately, you will turn your movie into reality. This is the enemy success system and the law of success. This is how all of the successful people achieve their dreams. You must imagine the life you want to live and play it like a movie in your mind. Your vision of earning 30k dollars a month or 50k dollars a month has to be created in your head. You want to succeed? Succeed? You have to be crazy. You need to be crazy to um, to get the reality. Repeat after me. Achieve by going crazy. If you can't, you won't achieve.
I hope that all of you can become crazy that you won't come to your senses. And I will end on a note. Thank you.